All right, episode two, we are on to arithmetic and memory. We are just going to start off with binary eraser. So essentially what you need to do is just, uh, it's going to give you a decimal number and you turn it into binary. I'm going to turn off the, um, the timer just so I can actually explain how binary works uh, in case you don't know. Great. One in binary, well, obviously, we got all the numbers displayed down here. Two, and there we go. It's uh, throwing softballs at us now. Okay, three. So, uh, obviously, we can just <clears throat> add these numbers, um, two and one. But if these aren't here, if the numbers aren't here, um, then it gets a bit harder. And we do have to do that later. So, it's worth knowing now that binary is a base 2 number system what that means essentially and get microsoft paint up so every value is worth 2 to the n power um, where n is the like the digit uh, you start counting from zero, so if you're looking for the first digit in the series, which um, is digit zero, then n equals zero. Apologize for my bad handwriting. So we get two to the zero power, which equals one. Then the next one, two to the one, equals two, and so on and so forth. Uh, so it's kind of, it's not complicated, but it is hard to get your head around and just intuitively start to understand it. Um, essentially what it means is that every decimal or every digit is twice as valuable as the one to the right of it. Uh, this isn't too different in our base 10 system, just the decimal, except that instead of twice as valuable, it's 10 times as valuable. So this one would be the ones uh, digit, and then the tens, which is 10 times as valuable, hundreds, 10 times as valuable, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, that's basically all there is to know about binary. So 3, 13 is 841, 642, 11, 821, 12, 84, 1, uh, 14 is 842, yeah, 22, 8, or 16, 16, 42, 21, 16, 41, uh, yeah, I'll just, um, call it good there, made it to level 3, I believe that was, did I meet, I think I only needed to make it to level 3, I don't know, anyway, I'll, I'll unlock this real quick, and, uh, cut to the next challenge. All right, double trouble. Let's see what we get. This level has four inputs, output green, when two or more of them are green. I believe this is just a uh, matter of OR gates and, or maybe AND gates. Also, why, why don't I have the three pin AND gate? Oh well. Three, four, one, two, three, four, five. I think just run each set of two. Missing one. All right, and then join these together with OR gates. We can use the three pins for these ones and then a two pin to join these two.
All right, let's see if it works. Nice. So essentially what we're doing here is just, uh, I wonder if I can space these out to make it more obvious what's going on. I hope that's good enough. You can see that um, every AND gate is just handling you know, a, a set of two pins, and you know every every set of two pins is getting compared. So there's these two, these two, these two, the outer ones, and the inner ones. So six AND gates, then two, three pin OR gates to combine those two into two sets, and then two pin or gate to combine these two all right moving on next is odd number of signals signals uh, i missed the objective using a maximum of three components output green only when an odd number of inputs are green we've got four inputs so what we can do here is a what's called a half adder. Um, now I just it's just a matter of whether or not I can remember what that looks like. So we have a exclusive or and I believe an and just wire these up. Alright, so that's... Okay. Side outputs... Um, we just ignore that one. So we keep that one. I think we can do the same down here. And then we connect these two with an exclusive or. All right, let's test it out. So one, so odd, and then two, even, turns off. Back to odd, even, odd, even. Right, it seems to be good at least for two at a time. Let's check three at a time. Hey, that's pretty good. Cool. So yeah. Um, really, I don't even need the AND gates. To just exclusive ORs. So yeah, the exclusive OR... Obviously, it only turns on when one signal uh, is given, which is an odd number, and so it sends it through. And that every each one of these exclusive OR gates combines two bits, and will return if you know just an odd number of that that subset is true. So like these two pins are a subset of the entire set, so it's odd, and so it goes through. And then um, you got the second subset of these bottom pins. So you send another one, and that sends it through. So you got one of each subset, and now those two subsets are combined together in the this exclusive OR gate into the, the greater, the, the full set. And so that's why it turns back off. 
Hope I uh, explained that well enough. All right, next, circular dependency. This is pretty much a, uh, a give me or a, a freebie. So just what it's trying to tell you is that um, you can't have the output of some component feeding into its own input because the computer will be unable to determine its state at any given time and there's an exception to this that it'll show you later oh I, sh I shouldn't have deleted that all right let's uh, go right into the exception then the delay line component so what we've got I suppose this is just telling you about the delayed not necessarily how to use it for a uh, to make a circular dependency acceptable. See it uh, like normally when we send that tick, it would just go straight through, but now it gets delayed. Oh wait, I was supposed to do it by two ticks. I'm sorry. There we go. All right, let's go to counting signals. The output component of this level is a binary counter where the first three pins correspond to one, two, and four. Use the binary counter to count the number of signals. Uh, the solution to this level is not very neat and requires more components. Okay, I, uh, I made a pretty good solution for this so what we're gonna do it's gonna look a little messier than normal but we're just gonna run these lines out like that and this is kind of technically called a bus it's uh, like a series of wires running together okay so like I said before with subsets we're gonna use two AND gates to combine the two subsets we have here. Just run them up here. Then we're going to combine this with an AND gate to create the full set. And that will turn the fourth pin on of this one. So Obviously, if there are four signals, it turns on four. Boom. So now we need to make the exceptions. We'll move this down a bit. Give ourselves some space. So we're going to make a branch off of these two um, with an exclusive OR gate. So now we're saying that if there is one of these subsets turns on, but not the other, then we run it through. Uh, we're not going to run it through to a pin yet, because uh, there's more subsets or more logic we need to perform. So what we're also going to do is we're going to combine the two subsets with exclusive OR gates. Wire these all up. There to make it a little neater. All right. Then same thing with here. We need to combine these subsets with both an AND gate and an exclusive OR gate. make it look nice just to make it more readable okay so 
if we have one turn on, it's going to turn on one exclusive or gate. And then if we if we only have one of these turned on, then that's going to turn on this exclusive or gate. So that means we can just one run this one straight to one, because it will only turn on if only one of these uh, subsets is turned on. So we can see any one that we turn on will run straight through. You can kind of follow the green trail to see exactly what's happening. See it goes to both the exclusive or and the na and the end. But only one of these will ever be on at any given time. Now you see if I turn two on, then the exclusive or turns off. But if I turn on one bit of each subset, then both of the exclusive or turns on, turns on, but only the end will turn on. So now we can combine that with our exclusive or gate down there. Just using regular or gate for that. Kind of running out of space. Let me do that. And that goes to two. Because, you know, two pins. Um, this AND gate combines two pins that are in different subsets. So we got the first subset and the second subset. The two pins are from different subsets, which gets represented here. But if they're in the same subset, so let's say the, the bottom subset are both on, then that is what gets represented in this exclusive OR gate. Goes to two. I hope um, the explanation about subsets is making sense and sort of parsing the information by reducing the number of bits you're actually working on at any given time. So, you know, they give us four, but, you know, we only gonna, we only want to work on two at a time. You know, we have gates with three pins, but two is much easier to parse in, in my brain at least. So, let's move on. Alright, the half adder. Uh, this is actually what I was referring to in the last one. Um, but, or maybe it wasn't the last one, but one of the previous ones. Treat the inputs as 0 or 1 depending if they are off or on. Adding them together in binary such that the result is either 0 or 1. As with normal addition, if the result cannot be described with one digit, set the carry to one. So all we need is exclusive or and an AND gate. So another uh, reference to this subset theme. Um, we only really have, um, or not even really a subset. It's just a it's just a set. Just hook this up. One turns on, turns on the sum. Doesn't matter which one, but you turn them both on, and it turns on the carry. Now a full adder, it has a third bit, and that's the carry. So, you know, if you had um, multiple of these hooked up, you want the carry to, uh, you know, carry over. All right, next up we have the full adder. So yeah, just the uh, same thing we were doing before, but like I was explaining, the we need the carry in. And, uh, I'm actually going to move it up here and the carry to down here. And I'll show you why at the end. Okay, so we need two exclusive ors, two ands, And then an OR. You can go ahead and hook up the ANDs to the OR. Then an input to the 
exclusive ore. Or well, each input the the exclusive ore. This exclusive ore feeds into this one. And then the other pin comes from the carry. The carry also <clears throat> goes in to this AND gate. Uh, I believe that's it. And yeah. yeah, that's it for the carry. The other pin from here comes from this exclusive ore. And then these two pins come from our input. I guess I should have rotated that to come down here, but it'll be fine. Alright, so we send a 1, we get this sum, so that's like adding 1 plus 0, add 1 plus 1, then we get the carry, and then add 1 plus 1 plus 1, we get sum and the carry. So that's like dropping the 1, carrying the 1. Uh, so the reason I stack this carry vertically, you know, it's exactly where the carry in is also coming. Uh, the reason I did that is because in a ripple carry adder you've got multiple of these so then you'll have one like down here and here and so on and so forth and every one of these handles one bit of the the byte or however many bytes you're feeding it and so yeah that's just how you would construct it Boom. All right, moving on. All right, double the number. Uh, quite possibly the easiest uh, challenge out of this set. Um, you get these new tools. You get a splitter and a maker. And literally all you do is take the one from this one and wire it to the two of that one two to four four to eight so on and so forth oops so simple as all right odd ticks i don't really remember this one um delay line is allowed to depend on its own input oh okay so this is where I was telling you about the exception to the to the circular dependency. Uh, what do they actually want me to do? Output red on even ticks and green on the odd ticks. So odd ticks would be starting with first. And I think all we need to do is get a not gate. So it feeds green. Does that work? Okay. Cool. So yeah, uh, the reason it's able to feed into itself is into itself is because uh, the delay means that the computer can still determine what like the output will be. So it says like, uh, let's start this over. So it's red. So the output is currently red, or the output next tick is red. So it's green now. And so the next tick, the output will be green. So now it's red. The next tick, the output output will be red. And so it's always able to tell what it will be next turn. Whereas if there is no delay, it it's, uh, can't determine it. All right, the bit switch. The component output different values on the same wire. You can you get an error. Okay. Using two knock gates and two switches, build an exclusive or gate. 
Uh, I'm going to explain what they meant real quick. So if you have two gates connected to a wire, um, it's not necessarily a problem unless they both try to put a value on the same wire at the same time. And then in that case, you get a short circuit. Uh, so like if you had two gates, let's pretend these knock gates are something else. And you had two switches. The switch isn't going to let the gate output until it's fed a value here. Uh, and so you can only have, like, you could only make it so one gate puts a value on the wire at a time. So that's pretty useful. There we go. Okay. So, take a switch, take a knot, wire the output of the knot to the top of the switch, take one input, put it to the knot, take the other input, put it to the switch. Yeah. So, <clears throat> then you take the other two and just do it to the other inputs so this one going to there that one's green and that one's green so now we can put these both onto the same pin which is essentially the same as putting it on the same wire and the reason it's not going to cause a short circuit is because only one will ever write at a time. That one's writing. Now that... No, I guess they're both writing. Um, wait, no. This one this one is not writing. Um, it's just weird that it's showing the arrows going in this direction, but it's, it's not. It's disabled. All right. So next up is saving gracefully. The ley line only allows us blah blah blah. You have two inputs. When the first input is green, update the saved value. And when the second input is the value, okay. Always output what is currently saved. So what this is called is a D latch. I'm gonna have to look up the schematic. All right, so two AND gates. One NOT gate going into the input of this AND gate. Let's save, so that goes into the NOT gate. This goes into there. myself some space to work with um, these two I believe are connected All right okay er, okay no no one input goes to both and gates and then this goes to that one There we go. So I think this is our <clears throat> like the enable. That's the value. Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so next one is not or yes. 
two nodules. <clears throat> From where the AND gates into the outer pins of the NOR gates, then you wire the NOR gate to the other NOR gate. Now you need the timer that I left over there. Wire that into there. And then I believe you can also just run that to the output. Let's step through and if See if we've done this correctly. Ba, ba, ba. Nope. Okay, what am I doing wrong? Saving too long. I might have this output wrong. I need to run it off of this. That just doesn't work at all. Okay. There we go. Uh, so, oh, I had the uh, the wires hooked up wrong. I had uh, the save wired to the value and the wire valued the value wired to the save save wired to the value. Okay, say that three times fast. All right. So next one, I think we'll do we'll do the bite or bite not. Those might be the last two for the episode. I don't want to make it too long. I'll just do a two-parter. All right, so bite or. So yeah, if a, if a bite from, or if a bit from either one of the, uh, either one of the bytes is on, then we need to output it. So first off, we're going to have to split these. Bring them back together in the end. Okay, so now we just need eight OR gates. One for each byte. Five, six, seven, eight. And just wire up one to one. I'm gonna color coat this just for fun. It's a good habit to get into. Makes it much more readable Right, simple as that. Let's run it. And then we can knock out the bite knot real quick. It's a uh, literally the same thing, but even easier. So now we don't even need to uh, worry about having two pins per bit. It's going to bother me. There we go. I won't worry about color coding these ones since it's so simple. And there we go. Let's take a look at uh, bit inverter. I don't remember if it's going to be hard or not, so. 
when invert is green, output the opposite of value, otherwise just output value as is. So this is easy, actually. I guess that's our invert bit. Uh, I think we can just use a switch, but we don't have it. Okay. Well, then we can just use exclusive or. So this is our value on the top. And then this bottom one is just our toggle. See, it, if you just think about it as this always being sent, <clears throat> and then when you turn this one on, it gets inverted. It's kind of a just a different way to conceptualize it. An exclusive OR gate is essentially just it's a toggleable uh, NOT gate. So the NOT gate is turned off, and then the NOT gate is turned on. It's just that easy. Yeah, and he even mentions it in the, uh, the whatever this is called, splash. Cool. All right, let's knock out adding bytes, and then we'll uh, be done for part one. Add the two input bytes. Each output bit in the output should be a result of the addition of the corresponding bits from the inputs and potentially a carry. All right. The result does not fit in 8 bits. Turn to output carry. Finally, there's an input carry as well. This is useful for chaining together byte adders to add larger numbers. Yeah, they gave us uh, an adder here. So we'll just... Pop down eight of these. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Takes quite a lot of space. Got to split our bytes and then put them back together in the end. Carry. Just goes into the top. All right, let's color code this again. One bit one to adder one. I'll back this up a bit. Yeah, there's really no nice way of doing it. Just gonna have to make some spaghetti sometimes. Bit two to bit two, or bit two to adder two. And notice I'm uh, leaving the top pin empty because that's going to be our carry, like I was showing you in the full adder part. How it just gets sent down through the rail. Just run our carries back like that. There's our carry out, the quote unquote ninth bit that we can't use. Where the normal, I think that's the normal, yeah, the result. And there we go. Just a simple ripple carry adder. Alright, that will conclude part one of the arithmetic memory uh, section. Got perfectly halfway, but these do get harder, so I'm not exactly sure if time-wise it's halfway. This might take longer to do. 
but I hope you found this helpful. I hope you learned a bit about binary logic and help you visit me again in the next episode. Thank you for watching.